Myrna, you're quite welcome. Okay, it is now officially three minutes after the hour. We're going to kick things off. I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is Casey Kribari. I work at monday.com as a customer success manager, and I'm very pleased to meet with you today regarding human resources processes. I'm also very pleased to be joined by my partners, Chris and Marisa from Puzzle HR, who are our partners in today's webinar and your source for all things HR. We'll be hearing from both Marisa and Chris later in our webinar. I'm gonna talk about our agenda real quick. Today, we'll be discussing a handful of workflows. We're gonna talk about how to track applicants through the interview process. We'll be discussing a way to easily manage employee onboarding, which can certainly be a pain. We're gonna really dive heavily into automations there and we've made sure that the automations we'll be showing today are very broadly applicable so that you can take what we review today and, and apply it to your own processes. Finally, we'll talk about automated handling for qualifying life events. That's a really fun one. We will wrap with Q and A. So that is a nice segue into a little bit of housekeeping. Folks, if you have questions that you want me to answer, questions regarding monday.com, uh, a workflow, a feature, how something works, please put your questions in the Q&A box. You've all been using our chat function so far to tell me where you're from and to you know, let me know if you can hear me. And that's excellent. If you have any questions about monday.com, I'll ask that you put those in the Q&A box instead of the chat box. That way I can keep better track of them. We're also joined by my colleague, Julia, who is a monday.com expert and will be working to answer some of your questions throughout the webinar in the Q&A box. Thank you, Julia. Now, if you can't hear me or uh, see the screen at any point, do please let me know in the chat box and I'll be sure to address that. Following the webinar, as Myrna had earlier asked, a Q&A or a recording will be sent to you and you'll also be able to view it on demand at our webinar page. The link is right there. Finally, if you have questions about HR, which is a very unique thing, right? Your needs are your needs and, and, and going to be unique to your situation. Chris, COO of Puzzle HR, will be speaking to us at the end of the webinar about how we can partner with them and what that consultative conversation can look like. With no further ado, let's dive right in. I'm going to switch my view here to a different screen. So I'll just ask in about three, two, one, if everybody is able to see our applicant tracker board. I've got the board title highlighted right here. Can everybody see that board with me? Excellent. Thank you for those who responded and confirmed. Okay. To all 376 of you who have joined us today, welcome. Let's, oh, 377. Let's dive in. I'd like to introduce Marisa. Marisa is my partner at Puzzle HR, and she's going to help us understand the critical components of the HR situations that we'll review and identify which portions of those processes can be extremely difficult to manage. She's, she's an HR expert and she's gonna help us understand why some of these processes are so difficult to understand or to, to manage so that we can then dive in. Marisa, welcome. Thank you so much, Casey, for the warm welcome. So yeah, we're going to talk about a couple of situations today that often present themselves in HR and we help our clients with these things all the time. So really HR starts with the hiring of the employee and that starts with talent acquisition or the interview process. And while it can look a little different depending on a company's specific needs, there are some pieces that are not only extremely important, but also pretty difficult to manage. 
If you've ever led an interview, you know there's a ton of valuable information collected throughout the process. For instance, you definitely want to make sure you're capturing good notes on the things that the candidate says during an interview, but you also need to store or track other items like their resume and references. And in addition to that, it can also be really tough to keep track of each candidate's progression. So has Bob completed his phone screen yet? Does my hiring manager know it's time to schedule an in-person interview? You get the idea, right? When you have dozens of candidates interviewing at once, it's very easy to lose track of all of these important details. But what if you could not only easily manage a candidate's progression through an interview, but also lighten your own workload? That is a tall order indeed, Marisa. If we want to accomplish that, we'll need to make sure that we've got a central place for all that information to live. The good news is that we do. Let's dive into our applicant tracking board. Folks, I also just want to mention today, and this is a, a fun piece, if you're liking the boards that you see and you want to use them as a starting point, we're going to have them in a website called Stories, which is stories.monday.com. And you'll be able to download these boards as templates right into your account. Without further ado, let's, let's take a look here. From culling a pipeline of leads from recruiters, uh, all the way to making an offer, the interview process is loaded with moving pieces, all of which are critical, not only to finally making a good hire, but also to every applicant's experience, which is a critical consideration. We've created a board that will help us manage the complexities of bringing an applicant fresh from the recruiter all the way through to making an offer and getting a signed contract. Before we dive into the workflow, let's take a quick look at this board's makeup. So right off the bat, I want to point out something that is not actually immediately visible on the board. And this is the update section. If you see your little conversation bubble on any of these items or these rows, this is known as the update section. So when I click here, we can see, hey, here's my, my phone screen notes that me that I took, right? Uh, how did Nora hear about us uh, from an employee referral? It was actually Paul Chambers. Uh, we know why she's looking for opportunities outside her current company. We understand why she's interested in this role. It's critical that information lives in a central location that's very easily accessible by anyone involved in the interview process. After we've got a list of applicants, our first touch point with the candidate is this phone screen. And the information is critical because it, it really helps us determine if the candidate will move forward in the process. And these insights are things that our hiring manager will want to know later on. So that being the case, we wanna make sure that our notes from the phone screen are easily accessible by anybody. And that's totally accomplished by placing them in our update section. Additionally, we can use this space as a place to have a conversation about that phone screen. Maybe the hiring manager comes in here and wants to say, hey, Casey, uh, quick question for you. Um, what did you think about Nora's troubleshooting abilities, right? Wh whatever you wanna type there, that this is a, a place to have a threaded conversation about this candidate. It's a very helpful tool. Next, we're gonna talk about automations. We've got a, automations can do many, many different things. They're an incredibly useful tool provided by monday.com and they enable to automate us to automate critical pieces of really any process, just ensuring that nothing falls through the cracks, helps us keep track and, and stay on time. Let's build one right now to see how they work. First, we'll, we'll keep an eye out on a, a couple existing automations. If we go to our automation center, which again is accessed by clicking this automate button in the upper right of any board. When I click on this, it's gonna to default to showing me if I have any automations on the board, what automations those are. So here we see that if I, if I get my resume and I change it to go, it's gonna move the item to screening. Uh, and I'm gonna just pause real quick. I, I'm getting somebody who's saying in the chat that they cannot see the board. And I, I wanna make sure, uh, are the majority of folks able to see the board? Yes, okay. Hey, Carolina, I apologize for the inconvenience. I would, I would potentially try to refresh your screen and see if that will bring up the board. Thanks to everybody who's, who's confirmed. Appreciate that. Uh, so again, we're looking at all of our automations that exist on the board. 
what I want to do here is take a quick look at the board structure and note that we've got different groups, right? Groups comprise different items, which in our case are interview candidates. As we look through the board, we see that these different groups help us kind of distinguish what uh, stage each candidate is in. Whereas I've used the columns to help me, myself manage the complexity of the interview process. For instance, when I change Dave here to, you know, I've got, he sent in his resume, now I've got it and it looks good. I click on go. And now I know visually that I've got Dave's resume and that it looks good. And as we just saw, right, the automation after I change it, the resume to go, moves him from a new applicant down to my screening area. And now I know if I'm you know, working in HR that it's time for me to start scheduling his phone interview. And I've got a series of these automations that will behave in that way. So that's, that's a basic automation that's nonetheless very helpful. Let's build a more complex automation to help us keep track of employee referrals. Nobody provides better candidates than existing employees. And we love to pay out those referral bonuses as a reward but that's just one more piece of this process that can very easily become lost in the shuffle. So what we can do here is build a uh, automation where if our source column reads as referral, maybe we found out during the, the phone screen that they came to us through uh, an employee referral I can build an automation and this will be fun. If we change the contract to signed and the source reads referral, we can make sure that the person who's in the HR column, right? Whoever's managing this particular person's interview process will get a notification. How would that look if we built that out? In our automation section, we'll add a new automation. And what I wanna do is click on custom down here. I'll create a custom automation when and we're looking for a status change, right? Because our, as we saw, that status column for contract helps us know when it's signed. So we'll click on status and then I'll click on contract. When that changes to signed and another status, which is our source column, right? Is referral, then we wanna do something. What do we wanna do? We wanna notify somebody. What we're going to do is notify a specific someone. That someone will be the person in the people column, right? If I, if I use this or if, if I select a team member, that'll always be the same team member. What I'd rather do is use the people column so that this is a dynamic value. I'm gonna say whoever is in the HR column is gonna get that notification. How will the notification read? That's the last piece of this automation. We'll type it in here. Hi there. And then if I use these areas down here, which auto populate fields from the item that triggered these conditions, it'll automatically fill that in. So if I click on HR, and if for instance, Marisa is assigned to this in the HR column, this would so far read, hi there, Marisa. Um, great news. We have received a signed contract from, and then we know that the item name on this board is actually the applicant's name as well. They are also an employee referral. Please consult the phone screen notes in the update section and send out that referral bonus. Great. Whatever you want that message to read, you can, you can do that. And the cool part is that it will make sure that uh, the person in the HR column receives that message. So we'll just add that to the board. And now we've created a custom automation based on a couple different conditions. Excellent. One last thing I wanna, or a couple last things I'd like to chat about on this board are ways that it can really help us uh, distinguish between our candidates, right? Uh, eventually we're gonna have very many people on this board and listen, from time to time, they might not accept a job with us after we offer it to them. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep that example in mind and go through a couple different board tools that would help us make the information on this board be displayed in, in slightly different ways. 
So what I want to do is talk about this market column. You see this is a market column. All I've done is use a tags column. So anytime you add a column from our column center here and you click on tags, you'd see this. And these look just like social media tags, right? If you're familiar with the concept, it's the same thing. What I'm going to do, all I did was create a tags column and then I renamed it market. And that's what we see over here. So that's this column right here is a tags column renamed as market. And I've got, you know, folks in the East Coast, folks on the West Coast, um, folks who live in the Northeast. And I can use these as data identifiers, right? I attach one of these tags to each item and that helps me know where these people live. Now, that's important because I'm hiring in different markets for this particular, for these particular roles. Now then, we reviewed those automations that uh, move people to certain groups, right? I've got one set up that sends candidates into our potential future candidates group, which is down here north toward the bottom of the board, anytime they decline an offer from us. So let's say here that we have uh, sent an offer to Bill Evans, right? And he has declined it. He accepted a job elsewhere. And so we will move him from our interviewing uh, group down into our potential future candidates group. Here's Bill right here now that the automation has taken place. Okay, so far so good. Now, after time, this group will serve as a very different kind of pipeline for us. We can reach out to these candidates in the future when we've got opportunities that might appeal to them. This is a great way to reduce our workload in the future while cultivating a really promising pipeline. By using board filters, we can make the board present its data to fit our needs at any given time. Let's say that right now, we only want to view candidates who are in our East Coast market uh, and who are in our potential future candidates group, right? Let's take a look here at our board's filter. I'm just gonna say, hey board, thanks for all the work you do, you're great. Would you please only show me candidates that are in my potential future candidates group? And further, there, there's a handful of reasons that they're in here. Maybe they, maybe they didn't decline us, but we declined them because they didn't possess a certain skill set at the time, but we still liked them. Whatever the reason might be, I just wanna see those who have declined offers at this time. So now the board is gonna say, no problem, Casey, I'll only show you people who are potential future candidates and who have declined a contract that we sent them. If you're gonna use this view very often, you could even save it as a new view and call it like future pipeline, right? Whatever makes sense for you. And now, anytime I want to view that data just like that, I don't have to rebuild that filter again. Instead, I can just go to my view center and find my future pipeline, and here it is. There's another way that we can use uh, a different filter tool to kind of visually distinct, uh, distinguish our data here. And that's called conditional coloring. Let's say that now, you know, there's only, you know, a handful of folks on here. Maybe there's, you have a lot more in this group down the line and you'd like to just see folks, or at least maybe you want to show everybody on the board, but you'd like to somehow highlight those who are in, you know, let's say the East Coast, right? I can click here. And what I want to do is find my conditional coloring menu. Uh, first, I'll click my color. Let's say I want to make anybody on the East Coast uh, green. Okay. So what column do I want to use? The market column. When that market column is East, then let's highlight that one little section as green. There you go. So you can think of conditional coloring as like a, an added layer of filtering, right? We see now that this that did not make everybody else go away like the regular filters did. It instead just kind of serves as a highlighting tool, which is very easy as a visual distinction for our data. Um, listen, we've built this filter as a way to easily identify candidates who have declined previous offers. Uh, this same process can very easily be used to help you identify other types of candidates. Perhaps you'd like to create a tags column to help you identify folks who were great but didn't possess a skill set needed for that role, but you want to consider them later, maybe for a different role. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want to easily manage any piece of the process, just make sure that the information lives somewhere on the board and you'll be able to identify and manage it later on. What do you think, Marisa?
Yep, I think that's a great point, Casey. And I can see a ton of ways that this could be really helpful. So now that we've got our interview process managed, I want to tackle another notoriously difficult process, which is employee onboarding. And the onboarding experience is so important in the sense that it's part of the first impression you make on your new employee. That first impression shapes their perception of your company, and it doesn't end after day one is over. It really is one of the things that helps the company build their culture, and you never get a second chance to make that first impression. Now, just like in the interview process, one of the things that makes onboarding so challenging is the raw amount of people involved. You need to ensure that a desk is set up and ready to go, that there's a computer there, that the new employee meets everyone and is walked through benefits, the list goes on, right? And most of the time, there are many different people responsible for each moving piece. So I think my question to everyone is, what process do you have in place to stay organized and ensure that nothing falls through the cracks during onboarding? Folks, if you're thinking to yourself, uh, that's a great question, Marisa. To be honest, I don't have any process in place. Uh, maybe I use emails or a post-it note and I just Honestly, a lot of things do fall through the cracks. It's a great question and I don't have an answer for you. If you're thinking something along those lines, we can fix that. We're gonna show you how to do that. Briefly, let's take a quick look at our employee onboarding board. Here it is. We see that just like in the other board, we're using groups to distinguish between the stage of onboarding, right? Folks who haven't yet started, but have been hired. Folks who are in active onboarding, and folks whose onboarding has been completed. So far, so good. I need to make sure that uh, all my critical pieces of the process are managed, right? So I've got these columns that help me do that. HR rep to take care of certain things. They're gonna fill in the start date. Once we've agreed on that with the employee, uh, they're gonna schedule the HR meeting and tell us what department this employee works in. Our reporting manager is responsible for scheduling training sessions. And of course, we've got folks from IT who will help set up a physical workspace or you know, a virtual workspace, depending on the, the situation. Make sure that they've got a company email set up. Again, whatever you need, as long as that piece of the process lives in the board, you'll be able to easily manage it. Now, I want to go over something pretty, pretty cool here. Um, I need to make sure that each new employee uh, ha has everything they need. And before we really dive into this board, I wanna show you a helpful automation that I've set up in order to ensure that the moment we have a signed contract of employment, right? Which is something that we tracked on this board, right? The moment we have a signed contract of employment, that person has an onboarding process that begins for them immediately without anybody having to take action to get it started. Let's go to our applicant tracking boards automation center to see how this works, okay? In this, the tracker board, where we go through the interview tracking, I've got a very helpful automation set up. When contract changes to signed, oops, that's the wrong one. This is the one we wanna talk about. When contract changes to signed, create an item in a different board, a totally different board, my employee onboarding board. Now, what will that item look like? Let's look at this board again real quick. Folks, as we go through the interview process, we're collecting a ton of different information about these people, right? Their personal email address, what department they'll be working in, etc. This automation can take that information and place it in our onboarding board. So anytime we get a signed contract, we're gonna create an item in the onboarding board automatically. What will that item look like? We're gonna push the name over. In the position over there on that board, we'll make sure to use the role from this board for which they applied, right? The department, same thing, we're gonna carry that right over. And whoever the hiring manager in this board is will start as their reporting manager over in that board. And if that hiring manager decides they'd like somebody else to take over, certainly they can reassign it. But right off the bat, it'll make sure that nobody lives in that board without a hiring manager. Nobody lives in that board without their personal email carrying over from this board. 
You see where I'm going with this. Very helpful. Is soon, let's, let's talk about Charles Mingus, right? Uh, Charles is interviewing, things are going well. We sent him a contract and you know what? He signed it and he returned it to us. So we know that a couple things happen, right? Here on this board, he gets moved to our hired group automatically, that's fun. And as far as we're concerned in this board, Charles is done. But as we know, right, we got to onboard him now and that can be a, a sticky process. If we click here, we now see that because of the automation I built on my tracker board, Charles now automatically is placed into our employee onboarding board. And we know right off the bat that we got to get to work getting him onboarded. Uh, very fun, very fun piece of, of automated functionality. And it's a, it's a cool example uh, for you to consider in, in, your own, in your own needs. Now, I want to show you something fun. We saw how the automation pre-populates the item on this board with some information from the applicant tracker board, right? One of those pieces of information is the department in which that employee will be working. We see that Charles will be working in the marketing department. Now, folks, as I'm going through this example, think about your own use cases, uh, especially in the world of coronavirus, where uh, there may be many different considerations for roles starting especially if they're working virtually or at least have a virtual component to their work. What I'm about to show you can certainly be grafted onto your own process. In, in my example, this is important because a different IT person will be responsible for setting up the workspace of the new employee depending on their department, okay? If somebody is hired in customer support, they might need multiple monitors, right? And their own special equipment. If somebody's hired in marketing, their needs are very different. And so they've got a different IT person who will set up their workspace. So I've created an automation that says when a new item is created and the department is marketing, then we know that Lisa needs to be the person from IT who sets up their desk or their, their workspace, whatever that looks like, right? In our automation section up here, this is how that reads. And this is another custom automation that I created. When an item is created and the department is marketing, assign Lisa as IT. And again, we'll know that the department is marketing because that information is pulled over from the applicant tracker board. Okay. What I'd like to do is go, we said we we're going to be automation heavy on this board, right? And we're going to stick to that. Uh, we're going to build one more automation here, uh, which is to notify the reporting automation when the physical workspace is done, right? Lisa has gone through this whole section and she's got a company email assigned to this person. She's done creating their workspace. Now the, uh, the reporting manager for this person knows, all right, cool. This, this person is, is when, when, when they start, we're ready for them. And I'm, I'm actually going to get training scheduled. And that involves knowing where they work and all that. We want to just make sure that the person here knows when this is complete. That's another pretty simple automation that we can add. And we've got multiple different people columns, so this will be a fun one to review. When a status changes to something, notify someone. Which status? Well, we know that we're tracking that piece of information using a status column. So when physical workspace changes to done, notify someone. Who gets the notification? Just like in the last one, we want to do a dynamic notification, right? Whoever's in the people column will get the notification. Which people column? The reporting manager. What does it say? Hi there, insert name of whoever's in that reporting manager column. If I click here, right? Just a heads up that Lisa has completed the workspace for, and just like in the last board, the name of the employee is also the item name. You may now begin scheduling training. Great. Now, anytime uh, our physical workspace is marked as complete by the IT professional, the person in the reporting column will get that notification. Very helpful to just, again, make sure this entire workflow is, you know, not only visually managed on the board, but these automations serve to ensure that nothing is going to fall through the cracks, right? It's not like Lisa will finish building the workspace and then nobody knows or she forgets to tell somebody or maybe she tells somebody and it's not, it's not clear. It, everything is laid out right here for us. And that's very, very helpful. Now, if you're in our audience today 
you might be a seasoned HR professional uh, with all the passion for everything HR. You might also just be a, a maybe a small business owner who manages HR work totally out of necessity. Either way, I know that you have felt the pain of an employee coming in for work on day one without bringing the necessary documents, right? Here in the States, we, we have to fill out an I-9 document. And if you don't have the right documentation, like a social security card or a birth certificate, we can't move forward. You have to have that and we gotta have it right away. Let's solve that problem. How should we start? I know that by now you're all saying out loud to your computer screen, well, Casey, we need to have that necessary information live in the board and you're dead right. We need the board to know whether the I-9 docs have been received. So let's create a column to track that. I'm just gonna use another status column and I'll put that in the HR realm. We've seen that we can add status columns or any column by clicking over here on the far right of the board. And then if we wanted to, we could always drag that information elsewhere, right? Another way to add columns is just to move our mouse over the column title of any column click this little downward arrow and use this option, add column to the right. Just do another status column here. And I'm gonna retitle this, you guessed it, I9 docs. We're gonna pop in here and we're gonna add, uh, edit these labels. We'll call this one received. We'll call this one requested or waiting, right? Whatever you wanna put there. And we'll call this one, we'll leave this one as stuck, right? We don't have it yet. Now. We've got the column to help us track this. Let's build the automation. Of course, by default, this status will be blank when an item is created in this board. And that's exactly what we want. Instead of building an automation, which is uh, automated functionality that exists strictly within our platform, we're going to build an integration. And an integration is oftentimes a piece of automated functionality that works with other pieces of software. Right now we're gonna use email, right? I think you guys know where I'm going with this. I wanna send Charles an email and I wanna send it to him three days before he even starts with a friendly reminder to please bring his I-9 documentation, right? So let's say that we, we get, he's hired, um, our HR person agrees with him on a start date. We'll just call that next week, that's great. I'm gonna to go to integrate here. I'm gonna click on Gmail because that's the email that we use at our company for emailing folks. And here's what I wanna do. When date arrives and status is something, send an email to someone. Let's build this out. When date arrives, what date are we talking about here? The, the start date, right? When? Well, we could do it on the date, right? But that, that's not very helpful. We wanna give Charles a few days heads up so he's got time to find these documents. Let's say three days before. You might decide you wanna do a week before, a month, you know, whatever works for your situation. We're just gonna stick with three days before. Uh, we'll do it at like 10 a.m. after Charles is awake, he's had his coffee, and his day is really going. When a status is something, send an email to someone. Well, really, I'd like to send an email to Charles when a status isn't something, right? I'm just concerned about sending an email when these documents are anything other than already received, right? If, they're, if the item is blank, if they're waiting, if we're stuck, I, I want him to get that email. So what I'll do is change is to is not and make this an exclusionary condition, which is exactly what we want here. When I-9 documents is not received, send an email to someone. Who gets the email? Well, we talked earlier about using people columns, right? As a way to notify somebody within the platform, but we don't wanna do that. Charles is not in monday.com yet. He's, he's hired, but he hasn't even started at the company. We wanna send an email to his personal email. That's why we're gonna click on the email column right here. And we're gonna click on personal email, right? We know that his company email might not even have been created yet but we brought that personal email over from the attendant, uh, the uh, applicant tracker board through that automation that we reviewed earlier, right? So we'll send an email to his personal email address. And uh, this, this, this notification is gonna look or work 
just like the other ones we've built earlier today, right? I'm gonna type a subject line in here um, and we wanna get excited, right? Charles is gonna start working for us. Welcome to our team. Hi there, insert name of the employee, right? Automatically. We can't wait to welcome you in a few days. Your start date is, and then we'll just click on our start date to fill in that date that lives on the board. And we wanted to send you a friendly reminder, oops, to bring your documents so we can fill out the I-9. Uh, and now you might choose to, to list out those documents right here. So Charles has that, right? Those documents include two of the following, right? And then you can type out what you want to type out here, whatever that list is. If you type it here in this note, as soon as anybody exists on this board and we are three days before the date in this column and this column for I-9 docs has any value other than received, then they'll get that email sent to them, which is a blast. Okay, these are some really helpful uh, automations and integrations that really take the work out of our hands and ensure that everything is being managed by the platform. Really all we need to do is keep an eye on our monday.com notifications and make sure we're there to help Charles if he's got questions about his documentations. With these tools in place, our lives are so much easier and the candidate experience, like Marisa mentioned earlier, is vastly improved. That's good stuff, Casey. And so far we've covered applicant tracking as well as employee onboarding and learn from Casey that the main thing to keep in mind is whatever our process looks like, we really can make our lives so much easier by making sure that significant process components have a home in the board that manages that process. So that brings us to our last topic, which is managing qualifying life events. And here's the thing, you know that managing qualifying life events can be a massive headache Believe me, I know um, this is something we help our clients with all the time. And first of all, there's a thousand different ways you might be notified about an employee's life circumstances. Secondly, I'm sure you've experienced the difficulty in wrangling employees while you collect supporting docs like marriage or birth certificates. And third, all of this needs to happen in a pretty tight timeline. So Casey is going to show us how we can gather supporting documentation stay ahead of deadlines and centralize intake so that this entire process is seamlessly managed from start to finish. Take it away, Casey. Thank you, Marisa. <clears throat> and I just wanna say, Marisa is definitely not kidding, right? There are countless ways that we might learn of a qualifying life event. Um, maybe halfway through a productivity meeting late on a Thursday afternoon, uh, I get an instant message from Alexandra over in finance telling me that she's expecting her very first child. It's exciting news and it's a qualifying life event. Uh, in reality, I probably shouldn't be reading my company instant messages during a meeting, but hey, I work from home and I'm starved for human interaction. Either way, the damage is done now and I've got a choice to make. I can continue ignoring the online meeting that I'm part of while getting Alexandra's paperwork moving for the qualifying life event, or I can trust myself to remember to do that sometime later. I don't really like either of those options. We can use a monday.com form view to turn each column from a board into a question on a form so that people can fill out the information we need them to provide all without ever having to access the board itself. Let's take a look at our qualifying life events board first. Here it is. And now we can see that everything we would need to manage a qualifying life event lives in this board, just like we talked about, right? First, I've got the person in HR who's managing that qualifying life event. We've got the status of the event. We've got the date on which it was submitted. We've got the type of event, right? They lost coverage elsewhere. 
marriage, etc. Lots of different options here. We've got the date of the qualifying life event. We've got a drop down column, which is not a column we've used today. So this is a new column that for today's session. This is found in our column center. If we type in drop down, and the drop down column is different than the status column in that you can have multiple values selected for it, right? So I just took a, a drop down column, titled it type of coverage needed, and then created a bunch of different what we call labels, right? Just the value that lives here. And here's how we came up with our type of coverage needed column. Easy. Finally, we can use a files column to store whatever documentation that might be, right? And you could use this same thing with uh, resumes or a CV in our applicant tracking board, right? File columns are a very helpful tool. So let's go through how to turn this board into a form so that anytime somebody has a qualifying life event, instead of us finding out because somebody tapped on our shoulder at the water cooler or somebody sent us an email or an IM or whatever it is, we can centralize that intake so that the person who experiences the qualifying life event fills out a form, they'll automatically appear here and we can get the ball rolling. Let's view how we can do that. What I'm gonna do, and you earlier saw me using the, uh, the board form views area. We're gonna go there again. And what I wanna do is add a new view. I'm gonna add a form view. Okay, and you can see I've built one here before. You can title it whatever you like, qualifying life event intake form, all right? You might choose to add your company logo here at the top. Uh, you might choose to add a form description. I wanna talk about these descriptions really briefly. We, we say that these are um, ways for us to help people filling out this form understand what information we want them to give us, okay? So uh, we have add a form description, add a description to each thing. These are not gonna show up on the board, okay? Again, these are just gonna show up on the form so that we help people fill this form out. Please use this form to let HR know about any qualifying life events you have, All right? So here it says name, that's the name of the item. And in fact, we do want them to type their first and last name, right? So first and last name, please. And actually, we really don't want them to submit this without them. Uh, we, we, you can't submit a, a, this form without telling us your name, right? We need to know that. So let's make that required. Great. Now this next one, we saw this on the board, right? This status column ha on the board has been turned into a question. Now, this status column is for our use only. We certainly don't want them filling it out. So we'll just click this eyeball button here with a little line through it. And that's gonna make it so that that particular column is hidden on the form. The date of submission, we've got an automation to take care of that too. We don't need to know that from them. That's gonna automatically turn into the date that they fill this form out. The type of event, yeah, we certainly want them to tell us what type of qualifying life event they had, right? So we'll make that required. Uh, the date of the qualifying life event, we need to know that from them too. Uh, the type of coverage needed is currently hidden on this form and we certainly need to know that from them. So we'll unhide it. It's just the opposite of what we did earlier, right? We'll click on the eyeball button and now this shows up and we'll make that required. And we'll let them know you can select more than one. Great. Uh, we'll, in our files area, say, please provide your supporting documentation, right? We'll make that required too. Oh, you know what? Maybe we won't make it required. Maybe they don't have it yet. Um, they know that, well, I, I know I'm gonna have a baby, but I don't know when. I just wanna get the ball rolling. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll let them fill this out without submitting the file, okay? The update section, we've talked about that before. Maybe we don't want them using that here. We're gonna use that in HR, but we don't want them using that. Okay, great. Now, let's take a look at how this form would look for the person filling it out. We can embed this in a website if we want, or we can copy it. Uh, maybe we've got an internal website. Maybe we don't, and we just wanna put it in like an intranet, right? Like our company's internal drive. How would that look? 
Well, first, I'll just go back to our main table here. Now I'm going to open up a new tab, and I just want to do another quick A-B check. Everybody here can see this form view now, right? Yes, perfect. Thank you, everybody, for responding. Let's take a look at an example of filling this out. We'll just use myself in the, as an example. Casey Krabari, what happened? Um, I got married. Uh, the date of the qualifying life event, it was, it was yesterday. Okay. And uh, the type of coverage I need, uh, I need it all. My need all of it. Perfect. Oh, and we want to add a file too. Here's my marriage certificate. We're going to wait for that to upload. And here we go. I submit the form and that's all I had to do, right? Maybe I found the HR person uh, in the hallway and I said, hey, I got married. How do I get my wife some health insurance? They say, hey, no problem. Go to our company internet, fill out that form and I'll get the ball rolling for you. So that's what I did. Now, automatically in our board, boom, we see Casey here. We've just solved our universal intake problem, right? Now, we see that we've got an automation that automatically assigns Marisa so that she knows there's something here that needs her attention. The status is blank by default, of course. We know the date of submission was today because we've got another automation that when an item is created, we're gonna set the date of submission to the day it was created plus zero days. So essentially the date of creation. That's gonna be very important here in just a minute when I set up a new automation for us. Uh, we can even see the file that he's uploaded. Okay, great, that's perfect. Good one, Casey. Now, we know that operating in this deadline is extremely important, right? We've only got a few weeks to, to get this all processed. So what I want to do is create a cascading notification for the person in HR to get this done. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to automate. I'm going to add a new automation. And in due dates, what I'm going to do is scroll through and find a slightly different one from one you've used earlier today. This is perfect. When date has passed and status is something, notify somebody every time period. You guys know where I'm going with this, right? When the date of submission has passed and the status is anything other than done, right? We want to notify someone who, the person in the HR column, and we want to do that every week on Tuesday and Friday until this thing is done. We really need to stay on top of these, right? Th these are extremely important deadlines that cannot be missed. Um, otherwise, Casey's wife won't get benefits, and, and, and we can't have that. So we want to make sure that we're staying on top of that. We know how to build notifications, right? Hi there, name of person in the status column. Just a reminder that Casey's qualifying life event hasn't yet been fully processed. Okay, great. Now we add that to the board. And after the date of submission has passed, every single Tuesday and Friday of every single week, the person in this column will get a notification until we mark this as complete. And as soon as we mark it complete, those notifications stop coming and we can move this down to our completed if we want, right? Wonderful. Um, so we wanna just cover one last thing before we dive into Q&A and that is that, listen, everything on this board is extremely sensitive personal information, right? We certainly cannot be sharing Casey's birth, marriage, death certificate, etc., with anybody else in the company. And yet we've by design built a board that everybody can access that has all this stuff in it, right? So what we need to do is go to our board menu and just change this. We're gonna to go to more, uh, sorry, board settings and click on change board type. We wanna change this to a private board. When we change this to a private board, any guests who are currently on it won't have access anymore. They can't see the board anymore. Same with anybody else in the company. Nobody in the company can see this board unless you invite them, which you would do in this icon up here. Anybody who's listed here can, in, in the company can see the board. Otherwise, it's completely invisible. They won't even know that it exists. Okay, so folks, I'm gonna switch here back to our presentation deck.
Sorry for the brief delay here. Lovely. I want to thank you all for your time today so far. And I want to, uh, before we dive into our Q&A, just briefly discuss that uh, we have a guest today who hasn't yet spoken. His name is Chris, he's from Puzzle HR. And uh, we're very lucky to be able to spend some time with him today. We're just a couple minutes away from diving into our Q&A session. Where I'll be pleased to answer a couple of your questions regarding monday.com. And I just wanna thank Julia for doing such a great job of that so far throughout today's webinar. Many of you have already had your questions answered by Julia and we thank her for that. What about your questions regarding HR and your own specific needs? Well, from managing your payroll for you to helping you assess legal compliance or even navigate benefits administration, Puzzle HR is ready to help you manage any portion of your HR needs and save you money in the process. I'm very pleased to introduce Chris Timmel, who is the COO of Puzzle HR, and he's here to tell us about how Puzzle HR can help you. Can you hear me now? We certainly can, Chris. Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Casey and Marisa uh, and Julia. You guys make, I just, got, just want to say, um, you guys make a great team. And uh, Casey, are you sharing screen? I just have the... Oh, it, it appears that it has stopped. Um, apologies. Thank you for checking no in. Yeah. So, um, but you guys make a uh, make a phenomenal team, uh, and uh, I really just want to give you a shout out and so say that I really appreciate all the work that um, that the two of you and your teams uh, put into building out this webinar. Cheers. Thanks, um, Chris. And also a quick thanks to all the participants uh, for spending some time with us today. Lots of great questions, uh, lots of interactions, a lot of chats. We do uh, webinars. Uh, at Puzzle as well. And, um, you know, I, I definitely will take a few things uh, away from you, Casey. So when you join uh, our next Puzzle webinar, uh, you will hear me say some of the things that uh, that you've said today. So, uh, so thanks for that. Always love some good stuff. Um, now, if, if for the participants on the call, if you're wondering why the Monday team invited the Puzzle team to talk technology, uh, it's because here at Puzzle HR, we help our clients leverage the power of Monday.com um, to drive business results uh, by helping streamline processes like the ones we went over today. So at Puzzle, we have clients in uh, 38 states here in the US uh, and five countries around the world. And whether we're managing our clients' payroll, uh, their compliance with federal, state, and uh, international labor, reg labor regulations, uh, handling benefits, uh, culture, employee culture, uh, uh, business culture, I should say, employee engagement or diversity and inclusion, um, any or any number of things that kind of revolve in the world of HR. We use monday.com to streamline those processes and, and keep ourselves and our clients on track. Um, if you'd like more information about you know, what we do, what human resources as a service is, um, what uh, and what our fractional HR service can can do for your business, feel, just feel free to reach out. Our contact information is there, info at puzzlehr.com. Puzzlehr.com is the website. Uh, and please, please follow us on LinkedIn, puzzlehr, puzzlehr on LinkedIn uh, and, or, um, and or Facebook to keep up with uh, kind of all the things that we, uh, we've got going on and are happening in and I, I, I cringe when I say the exciting world of human resources. Uh, Casey, Marisa, thanks again. I'm looking forward to the Q&A. Hey, it's, it's our pleasure. And, and Chris, thank you for your time as well. Uh, Marisa, again, I, I just want to thank you for, for working with me on this webinar and, and, and appreciate your time as well. So uh, we're going to do some Q&A. And I do see that, oh, wow, Julia, thank you so much. There, there have been uh, over 60 questions asked, and Julia has already answered over 30 of your questions live. Uh, I recognize we're up against the top of the hour here, so I'm just going to say right now we're going to we're going to stay a you know about five minutes late uh, to continue answering some of these questions. And if you 